life. It's weird, it's probably our main inspiration for music creation and yet ironically is the main thing that gets in the way of it. Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. I reckon there are three main aspects of life which make music creation a real challenge. Now I'm gonna leave the most significant of those until last because I feel like the other two really feed into it. Now talking about the realities of life, I have to say this video would not be possible if it weren't for our sponsored DistroKid. There's a VIP discount link for them in the description down below in case you wanna release your music to the world. Now let's talk about our first challenge. This is something that I think we all have issues with at some point in our life and that is money. Have you ever noticed when people say I'm broke they may mean one of two different things. On one hand they may mean I've got zero or just a few dollars in my bank account, I won't be getting any more money anytime soon and when I do it's all got to go on bills etc. On the other hand, and you may have friends like this, when people say I'm broke, they may mean I just got back from vacation, I just bought a new car, and cash flow's a little bit tight until next month when I get paid again. I'd like to focus more on the first end of the spectrum because it's a place where I'm afraid musicians find themselves quite often. And it's not helped by people like me, music YouTubers who surround themselves with gear, implying that you need all of this to create great music. Let's get this straight. That is not true. Most of the gear we have is there for workflow reasons, just makes things a little bit quicker and doesn't improve audio quality at all. And if it does improve audio quality, it's just by a tiny teensy little bit, okay? So having no money doesn't mean you can't create great quality music. Now, if you've really got no money, you may want to reconsider something that you may be watching this video on or may have in your pocket. And that's a thing you normally call a phone. But in fact, this is usually a pretty powerful touchscreen computer, which happens to have a phone app on it. Now, if you look in the stores for these devices, whether it's Android or iOS, you're going to find either some free or some pretty cheap apps for music creation. Now, especially if you're creating electronic music or music which is only going to use virtual instruments, maybe soundtrack music, you can go a long way with these devices. Where they do fall short is on audio quality, especially when recording. The built-in mics are um, pretty horrible and the converters are pretty horrible. So when you do get a little bit of money, if you want to record some actual audio, there's two things I think you really kind of need. And I'm gonna suggest some things on a budget. The first thing is an audio interface. A lot of people don't realize that with many modern audio interfaces, you can plug them into things like phones or tablets, as well as laptop and desktop computers, okay? When you do that with one of these devices, you significantly improve the recording quality, okay? So I would recommend something like the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2, for example, a proven great audio interface and great if you're on a bit of a budget. Now, if you actually wanna record some sound though, you're gonna need a microphone. I won't beat around the bush, on a low budget, I'd recommend the Audio-Technica AT2020. A large diaphragm condenser microphone, great for recording vocals, and also things like you know acoustic guitars and things like that. Those two things are gonna have a significant impact on the quality of your music. If you follow the links in the description down below, you're gonna find, I think they're gonna come in at certainly like less than around about $250, okay? Now, you wanna be able to hear what you're doing, and I think just for the time being, you can get by on the headphones that you're already using, but when you do get a little bit more money, it's probably best to get some studio, what we call studio headphones, and on a budget, I'd recommend the Sennheiser HD 280 Pros, okay? Now, once you've got those three pieces of equipment, you can create an awful lot of music. And rather than invest more money into your studio, there's another thing which is gonna help you much, much more. And it leads us to our second challenge, and that is time. Now, although money is not technically 
infinite. There is an awful lot of it out there. Me and you just don't have it at the moment. But there is a sense that you can always get some more money. Time is very different. It's very finite. It's limited. You can't get any more, which means you have to manage what you've got. Now, a big chunk of it is taken up with survival stuff. So sleeping, eating, and doing things that you normally do in the restroom, okay? Another chunk of it is things which are a little bit more flexible, but basically things like school, uh, work, and things like that. And then the other chunk of it, usually you can find some flexibility in it, but you're probably gonna need to ask yourself some tough questions, okay? Things like, did I really need to binge watch that whole series on Netflix last night? Or maybe it's, um, you've been spending a lot of time on the sofa just flicking, okay? Maybe it's TikTok or Facebook, or maybe it's that computer game which took up all Saturday and Sunday last weekend. I'm not meaning to judge you at all. I do all of those things at different times. But I think we have to ask ourselves honestly, what do we want? Do we really want to create music? Well, that means that we have to manage that time. Now, I'd actually recommend to figure out some time slot that you've got regularly in your week. Perhaps it's two hours on a Friday evening or something like that. Wall it off and put a sign on it, which is do not disturb. What that means is, is you, if you get invited out for a coffee with a friend and they say, hi, I can either do Wednesday or Friday, you say, I'll do Wednesday because Friday is my music creation night or my music recording night, okay? So you just wanna make it a little bit inflexible and actually prioritize it, except of course for things like to weddings or funerals. I mean, weddings you can leave out. Probably you should go to most funerals, I guess. <laughs> One thing that doesn't take a lot of time or money is using DistroKid to release your music. For less than $23 per year, you can upload and distribute an unlimited amount of original music, okay? And if you follow the link in the description down below, you're gonna get a further 7% off at that amazing price. Now, amongst all of the thousands of stories I've heard from you guys over the years, there's one common theme, and that is musicians who have set aside music for years or even decades for one particular thing, and that is family. And if we're gonna be specific about this, kids. Kids take up a lot of the first two things we've talked about, money and time. So it's really understandable that you didn't get to make much music during that period of your life. Now, I just want to quickly get this out of the way because I sometimes think there may be a, a negative con connotation to this, that somehow people might think that you made a rather mundane choice and gave up on your dreams. I don't think that at all, to be honest with you. I want to give you a round of applause. You prioritise your children over your own desires. I think it's an honourable thing to do and those children will be super glad that you made that choice okay so with that said i do think there are some choices amongst that that maybe i may have made a little bit differently and let me know in the comments down below if you may have made a slightly different choice after you've heard my advice now i give this kind of parenting advice really really cautiously first of all your parenting choices are very personal they're influenced by all kinds of situations and even cultural um, things etc so look i don't want the last thing i want you to feel is that if my advice is different to what you've been doing that i'm criticizing your choices i am not the last thing i want to do is make anyone feel bad about their choices okay but here's a possibility I'd like to put to you because I feel, and this is a personal opinion, that sometimes we can over give to our children. I'm not talking about babies or toddlers. They're very much in need of our protection and our care fairly intensively. But let's say from, let's say from five years upwards where they can be left alone perhaps for an hour or something at a time reasonably safely, okay? And I'd like you to consider that it may be a healthy choice 
um, perhaps just once a day or maybe just a couple of times a week, again, to wall off a little bit of time and say, this is mine, okay? I've known some parents who do this. They go off to a room, perhaps they're going to work out and they literally put a post-it note on the door and they say, do not disturb except for, you know, a fire or another health emergency, okay? Personally, I think that's a pretty healthy choice for both uh, parties involved, the parents and the kids. I think the parents get to still maintain being a person, apart from just being a mum or a dad, and also the children get to learn to respect other people's time a little bit, okay? Children are great, but they can be quite egocentric, okay? So, um, look... Again, this is just my personal opinion. If you disagree with it, if you feel offended in any way, you feel like I'm criticizing your choices, please, that's not what I mean at all. And and I just think it's a possibility worth considering. And, and you know, you're not going to be able to create an awful lot of music and there may be noise if you're recording coming from other rooms, etc. But you can just kind of, you know, exercise that muscle a little bit throughout those years and, and keep it going on a fairly regular basis. Hey, you may have noticed that recently I've been making a few more of these kinds of videos. Let's say they're about the non-technical aspects of a music creator's life. I'd love to get your feedback on them. Would you like to see more or are they just a big turn off? And if they are a turn off, how on earth did you get to this stage of the video? We're almost at the end curious. Anyway, I'd love your feedback. It's really helpful for me. Now, another one of these kinds of videos was where I was asking the question, you know, with all of the difficulties we have with music creation, why do we even bother at all? You can watch that video right here. Thanks so much for watching today and I'll see you in the next video or in this video.